early 1980s, uh, his role today as the security uh, aide to Micheletti. He has a number of charges against him open in, for human rights. They accuse him of, of committing sev several crimes, and now he is an advisor to the coup regime. Battalion 316, do you see it being revived? With a different name, it's already operating. The crimes being committed are is torture to create fear among the population, and that's being uh, directed by Mr. Hoya. You have not seen your family now uh, for more than a month. Can you talk uh, personally about the effect of this, of your separation? A great deal of pain for the people and for my family, which are resisting alongside the people, suffering all the attacks of the mass media who have sold themselves to the coup. Their spirits are being formed. Their consciousness is being formed, and it's a consciousness that's very strong that will come out after this coup so that no one will be able to hurt the people and humiliate them again. Uh, some people have commented on your conversion, on uh, changing from allying with the oligarchy to where you are today with the popular movements. Can you talk about that change? I practice liberalism as a, an ideological method that respects private property, private investment, and respects public freedoms. I turned, I, I went to a social liberalism, a pro-socialist liberalism, so that the economy benefits the people and not just the economic elites. And this irritated the economic elites. They thought it was dangerous for me to organize the social sectors, and they planned the coup d'etat. John Negroponte, who was the ambassador to, Nicara to Honduras in the early 80s, also worked with Battalion 316. Do you see his hand today, or others like Otto Reich of the United States? Otto Reich has already made statements about it. Also, Ramon Carmona, who is a Venezuelan exile. In the United States, they have already unmasked themselves. I can't talk about other people, but I know that there are many hawks from the old guard in the United States and the, and the CIA supporting violence and arms as a method to solve problems. I'm someone who professes pacific, uh, peaceful means and nonviolence, and I don't support force to resolve things, but rather dialogue. What is your message to the American people and to the Honduran people? The people of the United States, their security is linked to the security, the safety of the world. Viol if violence and force explodes in the U.S.'s backyard, it will affect them. They should support peace and nonviolence and not be supporting coup d'etats. And the people of Honduras? that they maintain their resistance against those who want to take their rights away and firm up their, their social conquests. This will help the people acquire the maturity so that no one will be able to disrespect them, which is what the coup regime is doing today. If you were to return, if you are president again in Honduras, will you call for a constitutional assembly to change the constitution? I would call for a national dialogue. I am a Christian. I know how to forgive. I think that all human beings have the right to rectify and repent. 
and to be forgiven. Those who commit sins should be taken to justice, to the courts, so that they are judged. I'm not a judge, I'm president, and my work is always to dialogue to find solutions to the problems. Do you plan to run for president again? I never had that intention. Honduras doesn't permit re-election. There's no way legally within the constitutional order to make reforms. That could only happen at some point in the future, and that will not depend on me and it cannot happen uh, at this time, legally. Would you accept a moving up of the elections, uh, as was discussed in Costa Rica? I don't have any problem with that. I've accepted the Adios plan. It's the coup leaders that have not accepted it. Is there anything else you would like to add, Mr. President? To thank you and congratulate you, because during the 30 days I've been in exile, it's the best interview I've had. Many thanks. Ousted Honduran President Manuel Zelaya in this national broadcast exclusive. You can go to our website at democracynow.org for the video or audio podcast and the transcript of the entire interview in both English and in Spanish. A very special thanks to Andres Contreras of Democracy Now! Uh, in Espanol as well. We want to thank our translator, uh, Victoria Ofirio. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. As we turn